Welcome everyone. I'm Sherry Damaris and um, I wanted to come on with you today because I'm in the middle of editing a film documentary on whole grains and brown rice and gardening. So I want to tell you a little bit about that and also um, explain to you a little bit more about rice and how to cook rice in a lot of different ways and all the different varieties of rice. Um, in case you don't know me, I'm from the Philadelphia area. Um, I go back a long time with the knot. We, um, she actually grew up in my hometown. So um, I, when I was about 26 years old, I um, just started working at a health food store and discovered macrobiotics. And at the time, Dr. Anthony Satellaro, um, who wrote the book called My Life, was recovering from cancer. He was president of Philadelphia uh, Methodist Hospital. And he wrote this book that became a bestseller. So many people from around the world read it and they came to Philadelphia to help heal themselves, a lot of cancer patients. So at the time when I was taking classes, I got to see all these great changes in people. And I was a guidance counselor in a school and I was really impressed by what happened. So then I studied, I uh, moved into a study house for four years with the Waxmans. And then I went up and taught at the Cushy Institute, and did all the levels. And it was really nice because Misha was teaching them. And then I started teaching out in California. Yes, there's the book. <laughs> Recall <laughs> my life. Here's you the book. It. It's a yes. wonderful book. It's, yeah. My dad died of prostate cancer, but he, I shared that book with him. Um, so then I started studying, uh, teaching at the Cushy Institute in Amsterdam every summer. And I would run into Ganat there as well as the One World Festival. And so we'd travel and, and sort of cross each other's paths. So um, you're very lucky to have Ganat as your moderator. And um, through the course, my, the journey through macrobiotics, I taught kids at school uh, 25 each week, how to cook um, one healthy dish. And then we would garden. And I took all the recipes and we made a kid's cookbook and we sold it and supported the garden. And then I took that book to a publisher and that's how I created Macro Magic. And this is my book. So it was basically for kids, but adults started using it because it's got lots of pictures and you know, know your ingredient recipes and stuff. It's very easy to follow. So now I teach cooking from it. And I'm happy to say that we just launched a brand new website, macromagic.com. So you wanna check that out. And on there, I um, actually, you can just become a member for a very uh, low price and get a ton of recipes, videos, cooking classes and lectures. So uh, that will be launched in April. Um, to match the TV show. So the TV show I started, I actually used to have an old TV show called Tea with Sherry years ago where I interviewed Michio and a lot of people on the cruise and things like that. And then I had to stop and take care of my parents. And when I came back, I created a new TV show called Macro Magic. So you can see it, it's always online, all the episodes, season one and season two. Um, many macrobiotic teachers I interview either in the kitchen or online and as well as natural food company owners, doctors, uh, Neil Barnard and Colin Campbell's been on a number of times. So you can watch it on your computer or if you have a fire stick, a Roku channel, it's on there as well. So um, everything's easy to remember. It's just macro magic. So today I'm going to talk about rice. And I just wanted to, sh uh, can I share the screen for a minute, Gannat? Go ahead, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to, um, you already put me on share, right? No. So I click on desktop. Oh, did you click the green button? No, you need to. Bottom? You do that. Oh, no, you're the host, so you have to do that. I've set it up that you can do it. Okay. Share. Okay. 
Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know if it's allowing me to do it, but okay. Well, we'll try to do it at the end, I guess. I wanted to show you. Um, so we have a trailer out already for our, our film. But what we decided to do in 2005, I went to Japan and um, I was the speaker at the Veg Fest and in Tokyo. And then I traveled with the Nakas. They were um, macrobiotic couple teachers in Japan. And we went to a shrine and we meditated over the rice fields. And it was the first time I ever saw rice grow. So then after that, I, I sort of stored my pictures and forgot about that. And then just uh, in 2020, I started remembering it and paired up with Kristen Elwell, who is grow, has been growing rice for 30 years in the Northeast. So we thought we'd make a film documentary about him growing the rice because people don't believe or can't believe that you can grow rice in a colder climate. And he's been successful with that. And he also grows rice with little hair-like um, extensions on them called awns. So these awns, Misho used to explain, were very powerful and great for the rice because it collects sort of celestial energy at night. And most farmers grow or hybrid rice without the awns. And the, the awns sort of stimulate your own intuition and your own insights and things like that. So we filmed the seven stages of him growing the rice in a patty. And then we interviewed um, some well-known nutritionists and doctors about the health benefits of brown rice. And we show how to cook with it. And we also talk about climate change. So it's a 45 minute film. It'll be launched in May. Uh, we have a GoFundMe site that if you just go to GoFundMe and type in Spirit of Rice, you'll see the progress of the film. And if you wanna make a donation, we take any amount of donations. It's a nonprofit um, entity. We work through Planetary Health, so it's a tax-free. But we hope to get the word out, um, you know, especially in this day and age when everyone is so, you know, bombarded with all these world crises. It's really a great uh, light, um, positive thing to look forward to is to improve our health and to do it with especially home gardening. So today I'm gonna to talk about rice. Now there's many, many different kinds of rice. There's over 50,000 different kinds of rice. However, over the years, a lot of rice has been hybrid. It's the seeds have not been extended. You know, we haven't saved the seeds, which is a sad thing. And Many thousands of civilizations use rice as their main food. Um, the reason being, it's because it's one of the most balanced foods. It's got all the nice proteins and fats and carbohydrates, almost equal to the proportions that our body needs. It's full of fiber. It's a probiotic. Um, so if you take um, prebiotics like sauerkraut, it actually feeds off the rice. And you just get this really wonderful uh, feeling, like Ed Esco said in his book, of, of light and sunshine when you eat it. Because at nighttime, you know, when we were at the farm, it was fabulous to see. The, the inside of the rice is liquid. And as the sun hits it day after day after day, that liquid hardens into the grain. So you're actually eating liquid sunshine. And Michio had told an interesting story one time where people were eating a lot of bento boxes that had been locked up for years, sort of like canned food. And they were feeling super depressed. They would stay in their houses and they wouldn't want to go outside. And they had this really dark sort of outlook on life. And as soon as they started eating more fresh food, they became less depressed and more open and more wanting to be outside. So rice is, is sort of that energetic, energy food that um, it has a long, slow burning um, glucose that is really good for our brain. And it gives us stamina. So oftentimes I say I play a lot of tennis, I can um, usually outbeat anybody, even aggressive tennis mm. players, because my energy is more even. It's not up and down. 
and it's wonderful for babies. It's good for dying people. Um, if you make cook rice one cup to 10 cups of water and simmer it with a little pinch of salt and for 50 minutes and drink that as a liquid, it can help you know, really thin it out for people who are dying as long lost their appetite or babies that are weaning. Um, so you can use it in all sorts of ways and products. And we're gonna show that in the film as well. Sherry, I prepared that for Sheldon in his last several weeks. Just gave him rice cream. Very helpful. Yeah, they said even if a person is not macrobiotic and you give it to them for like one day of their passing, it makes their passing so much easier. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you were his angel. <laughs> <laughs> he was mine. <laughs> so um, I'm gonna show you different ways to cook rice. So brown rice is the hardiest rice. It's the rice that you wanna eat more often. Uh, we recommend it just once a day, not overdoing it. Um, but you wanna, you have to cook it. It can't be, you know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes on the stove. It has to be at least 60 minutes. So you can use a pressure cooker. This is a, probably the oldest style pressure cooker there is, an A-turner. Or you can use Donabi pots. These are really fun pots. You can get them Japanese stores. Make sure you get good quality. They have two holes on this lid and one hole on this lid and a really strong base. So you can um, bring this up to simmer, put a flame tamer underneath, put the lid on, the two lids on. And when you finally see the two lid, the two holes will go even with the handles and the one hole should go perpendicular to the handles. And when you see steam come out, you'll lower the flame and you cook it for 60 minutes, six out. Um, on a sort of low flame. Your rice will turn out really, really nice. Now this is for one cup of rice, which lasts about three days for one person. And this is uh, three cups of rice, which is pretty heavy um, if you have guests. Now, if you don't have either, you can use a Le Creuset pot. Really deep one or a stob. These are a little expensive, but they're well worth the price, okay? Or you can just use a regular pot, pan. The heavier pans are nicer. So we're gonna start our recipes. We have three rice recipes. I just wanna get started. If you turn to your handout, you can, uh, we always do this in cooking class, number them according to what I'll be doing. So I'm gonna start off with the brown rice with chickpeas, put a number one next to that, because that takes the longest to cook. And then I'm going to do the basmati rice with green beans and corn, number two, because we have to cook some vegetables for that. And number three, we're gonna do the rice pudding at the end, finish with dessert. Okay, so when you make rice one day, you can use it as a bowl of rice the first day, sushi the second day, stir fry it the third day with vegetables. So you can mix and match it or make a rice salad or a rice pudding. Um, don't always eat the same thing because then you'll feel bored with the whole regime of macrobiotics. So we're gonna start with brown rice with chickpeas. The reason I wanted to show this to you Sorry, that's my dryer. The reason we wanted to show this to you was because oftentimes people come to class, they don't understand that when you cook rice with a bean, it takes the same amount of time. There's some magical thing. That's why I call my show Macro Magic. <laughs> it has all these really cool things. When you cook uh, brown rice with any bean, it takes the same amount of time to cook. But if I was to separate that and cook the beans separately, it takes longer. So chickpeas, if you try to boil them, they take over an hour and a half. But if you cook them with brown rice, it takes the exact same time. So this is a simple dish, very simple. I'm gonna use my pressure cooker today because chickpeas are a little bit hardier. I usually use the Donabi pots for all my rice. So I've soaked, I just put in my pressure cooker. I soaked one cup of 
brown rice. Now, this is actually the rice from the farm. Uh, unfortunately, Christian does not sell it. And we've been having a hard time finding good quality rice around here um, because Coda Farms is, is one of the one company that we've used and they stopped distributing it online and Lundberg. So basically we usually use Lundberg and they come in bags like this in your supermarket. Um, there's this, there is a rice farm that we filmed but in New Jersey that will ship anywhere in the United States. Might not help some of you guys, but that's Blue Moon Acres. And that's a really good rice. He grows everything by hand. Now his rice and the rice at South River has been tested to have no arsenic whatsoever. So that's an exciting finding, which we'll put in the film. So I've soaked in my pressure cooker, well, in a, in a glass, container overnight and then I just put it in my pressure cooker. One cup of rice, one and a half cups of water. If you're pressure cooking rice, you do one to one and a half. If you're boiling rice, you do one to two. And then you always need to add either a pinch of sea salt or a small piece of kombu seaweed. So it's usually I buy kombu and then I cut it into one inch pieces. So we'll put that in there. And then we also have some soaked chickpeas. Now, when you soak beans, you don't want to use the soaking water ever. You throw it out. If you um, are cooking beans, you'll throw out the soaking water, add more water, and either boil them or pressure cook them. But today, we're just going to uh, take them out of soaking water and sprinkle them on top of the rice. Now, it depends on how many beans you like in this recipe. You don't need a lot of chickpeas to be with the rice because it's only like, once you cook the rice, it'll be like two cups of rice. Put too many beans in, it'll be like more of a bean dish. So we cooked, uh, we soaked a quarter cup of chickpeas. And we'll bring this up to pressure. And after we bring it up to pressure, we'll put a plain tamer underneath it. And we'll pressure it for 50 minutes. If I'm boiling rice, it's usually 60 minutes. So these are old style pressure cookers, but they're my favorite. If you can find them on eBay, um, there are a bunch of other pressure cookers. These are called Eternum. Uh, these are made in Italy, actually. The lid fits inside and you just shut it. Now when it, the pressure comes up, the little red button will come up and then you put it on the flame tamer. So that's just a basic rice recipe and it's good for every day, right? And you can add any bean that you want, uh, lentils, aduki beans, um, white beans. You can put any bean that you want in that recipe. You can mix it up with some sweet rice. Sweet rice and black soybeans is a wonderful combination. Do you have any questions on the first recipe? Yes, there are several questions. Let's see where to start. Um, the... uh, I'm scrolling back here. Um, is Lundberg rice on and is Purcell Mountain Farm rice on? Yeah, good. No, unfortunately, the only on rice is at Christian's farm right now. Uh, he uses a, a, a seed called the Borkian. It's a Russian rice seed and they have the ons. The reason why nobody grows it with the ons is because when you harvest it, they get stuck in the threshing machine. They're hard to take out. Um, you'll see in the film that we take gloves and we go like this and sort of roll around the grains to get the, the little ons off. What about the ratio of water when using an Osawa pot? A sour pot is the same ratio of water as the pressure cooker. One Do and a you half rinse? Do you rinse the beans when you uh, yes. discard the soaking water? No, 
No, you don't have to, because I already rinsed them before I soaked them. I always cooked with smaller ratio of water to rice in a sawa pot. All right. Uh, could you repeat the arsenic-free rice brands that you recommend? Oh, okay. So Blue Moon Acres, they're in New Jersey. And um, I'm not sure uh, about Lundberg and all the other ones that have been tested. Now, Lotus Foods, I've just talked to them. They, um, you know, everyone has, I guess they, they test their soil and things like that. But there, there is a small amount of arsenic even in our seaweed. And it's not dangerous if it's not above a certain level. The problem with arsenic is it comes from chicken manure cotton farms when they spray cotton farms if rice is grown in a patty it tends to have a little bit more arsenic because it comes up through the roots into the soil that's what we learned on the film uh, we had a researcher dr angelique seifert who will be in the film talking about their students uh, test all the soil from farms and they can tell you how much arsenic so you can actually send your rice in your soil to her and she'll test it and we how do much, growing as much, you know, that's what the film is all about, trying to grow it yourself so you don't have the arsenic problem. What is the proportion of rice to beans when you combine them? Oh, okay. So that was one cup of uh, dry rice and a quarter cup of beans. And like I said, my recipes and my cooking classes, I always say the same thing. Adjust it according to what you like. Don't go by recipes as the spoken word. So oftentimes, you know, you might have an electric stove and it dries things out. You might need more water in your rice. You might live in a Southern climate like Florida. I had one of my students in Florida always complain that everything was soggy. Um, or you might want to adjust it for your taste. I uh, like more beans. So maybe you want more beans in your rice. I cooked rice with peanut butter. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> okay. You can put peanut butter and sauerkraut and sushi. That's a good one. <laughs> so we're going to move on to recipe number two, because I know we're pressed for time. So we're going to do the basmati rice with green beans, corns, and shallots. So to prepare the vegetables, you'll see on there, one half cup of cut green beans and one half cup of corn kernels. I wanted to show this because this is the quickest rice salad. When the weather switches, it switches earlier than you think. Like late February, spring energy starts coming out of the ground. That's why you can plant your seeds and they'll sprout and start growing in your garden. So you need to shift. If you don't shift, you carry a lot of excess yang energy especially if you're a heavy meat eater. And then that shift roughly happens in the spring where it gets suddenly warm and your liver gets tight and your liver likes spring energy to move up and meat and dairy and a lot of baked flour products make it hard and tight. So then you need something sour or maybe some alcohol or something to really push that up. So to avoid extremes, maybe you want to start early and just start adding. So we are having a little bit warmer days. So this is a good time to change. And when you change, you wanna shift from less time on the stove because more time on the stove heats up the body. So if I make it chilly, that takes you know an hour or whatever to boil and cook. I don't wanna eat that in the summer. That's a lot of heat. I might wanna eat a kidney bean salad where I just you know, cook the beans, but then I mix them with raw cucumber and, and celery and some nice sweet and sour dressing. So you need to start learning to, um, and that's what Georgia Sala's teachings were all about, adjust to the environment around you. So because it's turning warmer, this is a real easy, easy salad to make quickly. Um, so I'm gonna use basmati rice. This is a quicker cooking rice, um, not as long as the hearty brown rice we used previously. And it only took about 40 minutes. You don't need to soak basmati rice usually. You just rinse it and put it in one and a half cups of water, just like we did the other one. Pinch of salt or pinch of kombu and simmer it on low 
what I like to do when I cook basmati or white rice is after it's done cooking, leave the lid on and let it sit. Don't be opening up the lid right away when the steam's coming out. That steam keeps cooking the rice, making it fluffier and fluffier. So let it cool all the way down so you can touch the pot and then take it out. So we did that. I already did that because we were pressed for time. This is um, the basmati rice. You see that it's much fluffier and lighter. Um, and this is what you want to use more in the summertime. And so they have all sorts of types of quick cooking rices, as you know. The quicker it is, the less nutritious it is. So white rice is the most uh, non-nutritious food because everything's stripped of it, the bran, the nutrients, it's like white bread. But it doesn't mean you can't enjoy it once in a while, like in sushi or in a salad. And basmati rice too is not as hearty as short grain, long grain or medium grain brown rice. It's, a, it's another strain of rice and it's much lighter. Same with jasmine. So just mix and match. There's red rice, there's black rice. Um, there's all different kinds of different rices. And like I said, Lotus Foods is a wonderful company that um, shows you different kinds of rices. So this is our basmati. The best is ginat rice. <laughs> so in the recipe, you'll see that I'm going to put some blanched vegetables. Now you need to have blanched vegetables almost every day because we live in, you know, our forests are cut down. We live indoors. We live with a lot of EMFs and sort of as you age, you get drier, drier. So it's good to have that moisture come back and it brings circulation to the surface of your skin. So blanched vegetables, almost daily. There's two blanched vegetables in this recipe. There's green beans and corn. Uh, it's not the season of corn yet, so I'm using frozen corn, but always make sure to get organic. So these are our green beans, just cut fresh green beans. And I'm using some white corn, some white frozen corn. And so you always want to blanch your vegetables separately with a pinch of water. If I have a, um, I'm going to just move the pressure cooker over. This is up to pressure. Turn on for 50 minutes. If I have boiling water, I'm going to wait till the water boils. And then you put your vegetable in and you skimmer it out with a vegetable skimmer. So I'll put the green, um, I'll put the corn in first because the green beans will be dark. I'm gonna put the corn in first. Now, when you blanch your vegetables, in order to keep them fresh, you know, it, nothing's worse than a soggy vegetable. So what I like to do, this is a beveled plate. You'll see like the bottom is sort of brown and a sushi mat. I put that on there. And when I take my vegetables out, I put them on the mat to drain them. Because if you just scoop it out and put it in a bowl, you're left with almost a bowl of water in the bottom and mushy. So this allows them to cool off gently, but it also allows not, not too much water to be caught in. So for the corn, you just need to dip it in and take it out because it was frozen corn, which is already cooked. And you always want to start with your mildest uh, tasting vegetables first, or the ones that don't put color in the water. So if you're doing radishes, you do those last. If you do watercress, you do that last. Sort of the obnoxious vegetables you keep at the end. Give it the green beans. Green beans take a little bit longer to cook. Now you can mix whatever, this is your base. So you can put whatever you like. You could put some pickled radishes in there. You could put some asparagus. You can put cucumbers, like anything you want. Think, you know, I had the hardest time when I learned macrobiotics to learn how to do bean salads and rice salads. I was sort of like just stuck. And finally realized that it's just mixing, you know, some raw, some 
blanched in with the beans or the rice and make it more refreshing dressing. Now for our dressing, we did take shallots. Shallots are like little onions. So you would skin them and you cut them or you can use a red onion, okay? And I pickled it last night. So this is what it looks like. You just cut it thin. I massage some salt in there and some umeboshi vinegar. Now, if you can't get umeboshi vinegar, you can use like just regular brown rice vinegar and you just massage it till they get really limp. You'll see like they sort of get soft and limp. So that means they're pickled. Now, I do a, a lot of pickling classes on my cooking, uh, in my cooking classes. You have to pickle your house first. I always tell people, when you make pickles in your house, if they're not working, check to see if your computer's on, your television's close by, or some big outlet, because the more electricity that is around, the less it's gonna pickle. Once you start pickling in your house, the microbiome lives in your house, in your atmosphere, and it affects your health. You know, it, it makes you stronger. Um, so your house gets pickled. And once your house is pickled, then pickles are easy to make. They say that you can't really make pickles and sourdough bread at the same time or things like natto and pickles at the same time because of that microbiome, um, you know, in the atmosphere. So pickles, some of them are super easy to make. You should have a tablespoon of pickle at least a day um, to really restore your microbiome because with you know COVID and all the um, viruses out there, it just helps your immune system. So we're going to um, add these to the rice for flavor. Like I said, this is such a simple recipe because you don't have to worry about a dressing. And it's a great recipe to take to a potluck. So you see how pretty that looks? We're gonna take out our green beans, which are uh, bright green. Wait till the vegetables are bright green. Almost like fluorescent color. Then you know you have the right. They're not dark. They sort of stand out. We're going to let them cool before putting them in the salad. Another ingredient we're going to use are blanched almonds. So you can buy them already blanched and sliced, or if you want to roast them, you can roast them in a, a cast iron pot on the stove, frying pan on the stove and slice them. We're gonna just add those to the salad. Like I said, you can be as creative as you want. You can add all of, you know, whatever. This, this combination of salty, sweet, um, crunchy, crunchy is really nice. So think of like different combinations. If you're getting bored of the macrobiotic diet, you don't have enough variety. So you need to think of the five tastes and the five um, textures. So there's soft, there's crunchy, there's um, mushy. You know, if you're always making uh, cream soups, you get sort of tired because uh, it's just, because, um, you know, it's always mushy. So you wanna do something crunchy. Like celery is a really good food to use for crunch. Celery and raw salads, I think it's nice. Sometimes too, if you're healing from a health condition and you're craving something all the time, you need to look at that too. You might be imbalanced. Just craving a lot of excessive amounts of crunch or oil or whatever means that you're lacking something in your diet. Okay, so here is the salad. And you can see how beautiful it is. It's just like really super colorful and easy, real, real easy. 
And that's my whole aim, like with my website and my book. I want to help people make macrobiotics super easy so they can use it, you know, practice it every day. Okay, any questions on the basmati rice salad? I, uh, I wanted to ask you before uh, about the, the fact that you cook the beans with the rice. Mm -hmm. And when I learned macrobiotic cooking, I learned that I shouldn't do beans with salt and you put it all together. No, I cooked it with kombu. Ah, right. Okay. But uh, you, didn't, you didn't take out the, um, the salt from it, yeah? There was no salt in it. Okay. Now, so just so you know, when you have a good point, when you salt beans, you finalize their cooking and you make them hard. So when I first started macrobiotics, my friend Carrie invited me to dinner and he had made this black bean dish. And I got there like an hour later and it still wasn't done. And then three hours later, still wasn't mm -hmm. done. And then he was burning them and pressure cooking them. He was determined to make these beans soft. So finally I said, Carrie, did you put salt in those beans before you boil them? Oh yeah, I put like a teaspoon. Well, immediately when you put salt on a bean, it hardens the bean. So do not salt your bean till the very end. So yeah, I wouldn't put salt in there. I'd put more kombu in there. But good point. Jerry, thank you. All original stuff, believe it or not. It's all new to me. Oh, good. good yeah, good, creative. Good. Thank you. Good. Yeah, like I said, we're going to make um, the new Macro Magic website really easy for people. Like you could be a subscriber for $4 a month and just get a lot of stuff. Or you can do a beginner class, a beginner and you get re recipes and videos all the time. So I want to make it easier for people because as I was teaching on the cruise and you know, Gannat and I have spent a lot of time in these festivals around the world, I see people and I think, do they even know how to make miso soup correctly? Like, it's just the basics. You know, we're all looking for the gourmet dish or the, you know, the new chocolate way of making cake, but <laughs> get your basics down so you just you do them daily and that's what improves your life okay so your your last dish is a really easy one as well um but i want to talk about it it's um rice pudding and it's a way to use leftover rice um today we're using jasmine rice again from uh lundberg so there's brown jasmine and white jasmine. You can make rice pudding out of any rice that you want that has already been cooked. This is a recipe that you could substitute any rice that you want. I'm just gonna show white rice because we haven't talked about white rice. Like I said, when you cook it, always go by the package because some white rices are heartier and some are lighter. Like Blue Moon Acres makes a white rice, but it takes about 35 minutes to cook. Lundberg was 15 minutes to cook. All depends on the hulling process and the hardiness of the grain. So I took one cup of jasmine rice and cooked it in this nice heavy pot, okay? So, but if you have leftover rice, you would just put the leftover rice in the pot. And then I'm going to add soy milk. Now, when I recommend grain milk, this is the only milk I recommend, Eden blend soy milk, because it's the original recipe from Misho Kushi that uses just kombu. Soybeans are extremely yin. If you just eat a lot of soy, you're gonna get indigestion, heartburn, things like that. But with the kombu, it's more yang and mineralizing and makes balance. So this is the original, okay? I don't, I'm not a big fan of, you know, cereal and milks for people. I think it creates a lot of mucus in the body and things like that. But if you, you know, want to cook some desserts with this, this is great. When I teach in Amsterdam, they have this wonderful product called, uh, I think it's soy cream. It, it makes a soy cream. I used to sneak it home in my uh, suitcase till I got caught. 
but um, it whips up to like a whipped cream. It's really nice, but we don't have that in America. So I'm gonna add a half cup. Now, again, if your rice is dry, you might wanna add a little bit more. Um, and in, if you don't wanna use the soy milk, you can use apple juice. I'm gonna heat this up. Now it depends on how creamy you want your rice. Some people like their rice pudding very stiff. Some people like their rice pudding creamy. So I would add more soy milk if I want it creamy. I'm gonna add two tablespoons of currants. Let's see if I find them. Okay, we use currants more often in macrobiotics than raisins. Raisins um, really bounce up your blood sugar. So if you're on a healing diet, especially fresh currants are a little bit healthier. Um, so I'm going to put that in. Sherry, what do you think about oat milk as opposed to the soy or any other kind? Oat milk uses a lot. I know people are loving it these days, but it uses all this oil in it, this funky mm -hmm. oil. Like if you go to mm -hmm. Starbucks or whatever and sugar, but if you can read the ingredients, Denny Waxman used to say, it's not the, um, you know, the combination of these soy ice creams and soy milks are really more harmful than eating regular milk and regular ice cream because there's a combination there of oil and sweet. And that is really hard on the liver. Like anytime you have oil and sweet or fructose, a lot of women who eat yogurt get breast cancer simply because the fructose is so hard on the liver. So I'm going to add for sweetener, just a little bit of rice malt. Okay, there's all different kinds of rice syrup and rice malts. Um, this is from Natural Import Company. Like a tablespoon. And this rice turned out a little dry, so I am gonna add a little bit more soy milk. to make it, it always depends on your rice. If you've got really super dry rice, you want to add a little bit more. Now you can put all sorts of things in it, like cinnamon and, and Ganat said cardamom is a hard spice to find in uh, Israel. So you could just use cinnamon. Um, I don't know, it's not No, hard. no, cardamom we have. That oh, was you one have of the cardamom? few things we have, yeah. Oh, okay. We're gonna put that towards the end. We're also gonna to put towards the end orange zest. Now, the reason I really like this is because when you cook rice, it gets a little young, heavy, you know, oh, I already had a rice for dinner, now I'm having a rice pudding and it's not light and refreshing. If you add some orange zest, so this is my zester. You wanna rinse off the orange and you just put it on the zester. It takes a little bit of time. You can do a lemon like this as well, or a lime, but this adds sort of that, that punch. Remember I told you that if you're making all your food plain, um, it gets unattractive and you sort of feel dull day to day and you feel heavy. Well, if you add a little bit of yin, you know, with the yang, or a little bit sour with the sweet, it sort of like balances out your dish. So this is the orange zest, which I'll add towards the end, because whenever you add citrus, it cooks off. Same with ginger, it'll cook off, so you put it at the end. I'm gonna put a pinch of cardamom in there. You can also use nutmeg, nice. Now I'm slowly um, simmering this. Slow, slow, slow. So it's not going to be um, boiling all over the place. And I just keep it in the pot for a little bit. And it will turn creamy. Thank you. 
Some people like chopped apples in their rice salad. I mean, their rice pudding. And if you want, this is optional. You can add some tahini. This is toham tahini. This is wonderful, really rich. Um, and this is just regular tahini. There is another tahini that you can get online. Um, get the this is a wonderful, you guys probably know better tahini than I do, but this is Kavala. Kavala is a great organic tahini. This is black and then it comes in tan as well. And they also have pre-roasted sesame seeds and in black and tan. So you can buy them and just heat them up and keep them in a jar. It's important as you grow older to eat sesame seeds because they're full of calcium. We don't recommend gamasio so much anymore because of the salt uh, is so young, but uh, toasted sesame seeds like on your rice, they're really nice. So we're going to put about a teaspoon uh, or a tablespoon of tahini in the rice pudding. And that just adds a little bit of thickness to it. It looked like the oil was on top of your jar. Was it mixed? Uh, no, I just stirred it around a little bit. You didn't see. But yes, if the oil's on top, definitely stir it around. And you can, if it gets hard, like the black tahini often gets hard, tip your jars upside down and store them. And it will naturally, you know, instead of you digging in there and trying to stir. I found the black tahini really bitter. I mean, like. Yes, if you oh. mix it with orange juice and put it on like watercrest, it's a really nice dressing. Um, but very important for the bones. If you're looking, you know, if you have like a, tooth problems or bone, you know, um, osteoporosis, have your beans with greens every day and make sure you have sesame seeds and tahini. Black tahini has more minerals in it than tan tahini. Okay, any questions on the recipe? We did put a pinch of salt in there when I cooked the rice, so I didn't add extra salt. There's a question about uh, saltless gomasio, which of course is no longer gomasio. And also without the salt, you're not balancing out the oil of the sesame. That's the point of the whole thing. Yeah. Um, well, the problem is, so traditionally when we made gomasio, we roast the rice first, very young. And, um, you know, we use it for healing all sorts of conditions. However, what's happening is our world, like Misha had explained before he died, if you clench your fists and keep clenching them harder, 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 that's the way our world's getting more and more, 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 more young, quicker, quicker. We're going towards the center. So we need to adjust a little bit. If we're having too much kamasi or too much sea vegetables, too much pickles, um, we're getting so tight inside. Our health is created by what we can discharge, not what we take in, but what we can discharge. If we're too tight inside, we're not able to let go of things. And you can get severely sick by getting too tight inside, too young. And also our thinking changes. We think we're yin and we keep going, 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 going. But we realize like we don't want to be around people anymore. We're rigid. Our, our muscles are rigid We're tight. Or we might be overeating to, to try to, to make balance for that. Um, I know because I've been there <laughs> living in a study house, but you have to find your own balance. If you feel like you're really deficient in minerals and you're, you don't have any energy, then take a little bit, but just be careful not to overdo it. So the trick to macrobiotics is we just teach you what does yang feel like? What does yin feel like? And then you use those tools to figure out what's best for you. Everyone has free choice. This is the one opening, 
you know, in our spiritual channel. So we all have free choice, what we put in our mouth. So you choose what makes you feel better. And that just means self-reflection after the day's over. How did I feel? Was I screaming at my kids? Was I angry? Was I upset? Or was I calm and peaceful? Was I relaxed? Was I tight inside? Was my infection going away or was it increasing? Was my swollen ankle getting better or was it getting worse? Okay, you become your own doctor. So no one can tell you what to do, but we can just give you all the tools and the parameters. And it's almost like taking your intuition and making it more like verbal. And then you realize, oh, you know, this doesn't feel right to me putting, you know, I'm making my salad and I don't, you know, the salty part, I don't, I don't really like in there or it needs more sweet or whatever. So my classes, I don't want to just have you be a robot and copy my recipes. I want you to start thinking for yourself. So after each class, I have everybody practice the dishes. We share photos of the dishes and talk about them. And then you become your own style. You create your own style. So it's more cooking from intuition. Okay, so now we're gonna add the orange zest to the rice pudding. And you don't have to simmer it that long, just long enough to get all the ingredients together. I will scoop it up. Now, I always like to, like what I said, put a cover on the pan, just so I do most of my dishes and just let it sit so the energy comes down or I dish it up. Hopefully my rice with chickpeas will be done in time to show you. I wanted to show you another thing too. This is a wonderful container. Um, I bought this in San Francisco, but they sometimes sell them online. So this is a rice bucket. We used to use these in the study house. So you can take your rice out of the pressure cooker or the Darnabi pot and you put it in here and it stays fresh. You don't have to refrigerate it. You put a nice sushi mat on top to let it cool and then the lid on. Now, if you're in a hot climate, this won't work because it will grow moldy really fast. So it has to be in a cool area. Question? No. Okay. Any questions on any of the recipes? Someone was asking uh, if the rice salad actually had a dressing or uh, how that worked. No, I wanted to show you something without a dressing because the shallots, you'll see as it marinates, the shallots are, are so um, astringent, but they're also like salty. So it's like olives in the salad. And um, you can sprinkle a little vinegar, on, you know, brown rice vinegar on top if you want. But I wanted to show you the easiest way to make a summertime rice salad. Um, okay, so. So Sherry, as far as changing seasons, would you be eating all three of these dishes or perhaps one of them right now as we transition? I would eat all three because the rice pudding is like nice, you know, it's white rice. So it's towards the summer. The rice salad is good. And the brown rice with chickpeas is still, you can use like medium grain rice or long grain rice you can start using, but that's a basic dish. So even in summertime, we sweat, we need minerals. So we still use a little burdock in our soup. We still use uh, buckwheat once in a while as a salad. Um, we still need those minerals. If I just lived on watermelon and you know um, all the summertime fruits, I get super weak. A lot of people go into juicing full time, right? All, no fiber, no minerals. And Michio had told me one time, you have to be super careful with that because you can deplete your, you know, your good minerals very quickly. And it's hard in the heat. That's why I say transition now to a lighter base of your cooking. And as you move into the hot weather, you'll be stronger. If you stick with really strong foods, strong, salty, heavy foods, you're gonna have a problem in the heat 
And then you're going to go for the extreme yin foods, which are going to be more depleting. Okay, let's um, open up our rice time and I'll scoop some out into this nice dish to show you what it looks like. We can sprinkle a little bit of um, cinnamon on top, which is nice. Okay. It's just simple, right? And like I said, if you don't have the soy milk, you can use the apple juice. That makes it nice too. And then we're gonna put a little bit of ground nuts on top. And if I have the cinnamon, I don't know where my cinnamon is, but I guess we can get this just a little on top. Okay. Simple, right? Okay, as we um, wait for the chickpea rice, I'm gonna to try to share my screen again because I really wanna show you pictures of the farm. Sherry, we only have uh, two, three minutes or so. Oh, okay. Yeah, so what I'll, yeah. what I'll I, do- I have I'll, put the link okay. in all my newsletters. Okay, mm -hmm. perfect. I will um, also take a picture of the chickpea rice, Skanat, and email okay. that to you, and then you can share that with everybody. Any other questions before we sign off? Um, looking here. Uh, currants are only ground. Ground. Currants are only dried, correct? There is no fresh currants. Um, you can find, yeah, currants are only dried, yeah. as far as I know. And the nuts you used, I think, just now for garnish were slivered. Yes, yeah, sliver yeah. and blanched. Mm -hmm. So for, it's really good to have nuts on a regular basis. So uh, walnuts and pecans, you can eat raw. Yes. Almonds, you need to roast or blanch. Pumpkin seeds, you need to roast or blanch. Sunflower seeds, you need to roast or blanch. Um, and sesame seeds you need to roast. Okay. Well, um, anything else? Okay, I think that's it. Okay. Okay, well, thank you everyone for joining. Feel free to email me. Uh, Gana has my email if you have any questions and I hope to see you in one of my classes. Um, and also tune in to Ganat tomorrow. Well, it'll be on, um, she's the first guest on Monday. So her show will be up Wednesday uh, and Friday. I think Wednesday at three, Friday at 10, but I'm not sure, but it will stay up. For Your two. time, right. Yeah, yes, our time. Good. Thank you so much, Sherry, always. Thank it's you. Such a pleasure. Thank you, 